Welcome to Embedded Programming in Go. So here's what I want to do today. Uh, instead of trying to get a motor going or any sort of thing like that, which I've just been defeated at every turn, what I decided to do was step back. I'm still using the Raspberry Pi, but in the same exact one I had before, the A, um, the one I've been using, but I took off the motor shield, the SB component motor shield I was trying to get to work and I couldn't really get to work reliably in Go uh, with using GoBot. And I decided to put on my Groove shield on it. Now, um, I had a set of videos planned to talk all about Groove shield and why they're so cool. And maybe after this, I probably won't have to do that series because uh, you're probably going to learn need to um, learn everything you need to know about Groove. And so the reason why I decided to step back is to just see if I can use the peripheral of the Raspberry Pi. Um, I never had to use a peripheral of a Raspberry Pi before. I simply use them as media centers, and like I, um, I also use them as like little single simple computers. And I, I run a PBX on one of them, which um, I might cover in one of my video for just stuff, which is my series of random stuff that I kind of do on the side. Uh, but anyway, so I use them that way. And I, I've really never had a problem with them. I've had boards go bad. But to use the peripherals, you know, the pins, I've never really had to do anything with those. And so this growth shield basically breaks out the pins. So the pins are available there. But they also have this type of connector, and it's just a four pin connector. And they give you a number of components, and all of them um, uses this four wire connection. Now, some of the wires are no connection or don't care if you like. And so, for example, here's a button, but you can imagine that a button doesn't really need four pins. That's what I wanna do. I wanna step back and see if I can use Go to control all of these things. And if I can use Go to control them, then I can go back and try and figure out what is wrong with using Go to GoBot um, library or package to control the motor. But if it's controlling this, then it should work. And maybe I can file a bug report. But if I can get GoBot to write messages on these things and all this other stuff, then yeah, it's not, it might, it's not a problem with the board. I'm pretty sure the board doesn't really have a problem. If there's any problem with the board, it might be the Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi is a little bit unstable with this board. I don't know if anyone you using it yet. The um, the Raspberry Pi A Plus board, I think it's called. And I have been having some instability, some stability issue with the Wi-Fi. So that is the idea: is to simplify. I really like these Go Shield, um, these Go modules and stuff, and these Groove modules, sorry, um, because it's so easy and straightforward to connect. Um, so let's get started. Let me wire it up, um, power up my board. And for that, I'm going to usually I use an external power supply, but today I'm going to use my Omni charge, which I really love. Um, this would probably be an episode of my just stuff video series, but um, this stuff is really, really, really cool. I travel everywhere I leave those, anytime I leave those for any extended period of time, I take this. And here's a portable charger with um a 120 volt um output this is the output so you charge it here and you have usb and you can even power up a, like a macbook or something like that from here too the input you just have to switch it but here this is um 120 volts output and so i've never seen a battery charger that has this so i've used this number of times when i need to be on the road and at least i could get another um half an hour to um, 45 minutes or so um, for my laptop. Anyway, so that's what I'm gonna be powering this up with. So I'll put this over there um, or turn it on and then I'll turn on uh, USB. And let's see here. So this should power up. And so uh, which one did I turn on? Oh, I turn on the not USB, but I turn on the AC voltage. So yeah, USB. There's USB. Um, I don't want AC. No, it's off. All right. Um, so yeah, so that's booting up, and 
I'll let that boot up and then I'll come back and we should probably try it with something very simple. So the easiest thing is to try and get, uh, let me see which one would be easier to see, probably red. I don't know which one would be easier to see against the screen, maybe red. Yeah, let's do red. Uh, green one wouldn't be good. Uh, borders green, thing is green. The, back, the clock there is green. So, um, so this is plus. And so for LED, the flat side is the negative cathode. And so the other one is the anode to plus. So that's going to be connected like that. And then I will need to worry about this um, thing. And then so the way you use this groove shield is basically um, not every pin is going to be pulled out. And some of these um, groove ports, I don't know what they call them, um, are going to be two pins. So if you look, you see this one is pin 12 and 13, then the three volts and ground. We already talked about that. The, the four pins is going to be ground, VCC, and then two signaling pin. And so all of these seems to be three volts let's see so okay so in terms of needing a port well i can just look for any port that is a gpio port and then decide and you can see up at the top you tell you this is pulse width modulation so this would be one of the pin that does pulse width modulation for the raspberry pi this is d5 and you can see five up at the top there and then six so that tells you that those are the two pins that are available there um, of course, if you're using like an LED, because your second pin is no connection, what that means is that you just simply use the first pin. So if I put it in here, I'll be using D5. If I put it here, I'll be using D16, that sort of thing. Um, because there's only one pin that I need to use. And these are the analog pins, so four analog pin. So this is where you put in like this potentiometer or the sensor, they would be connected to the analog ones. Um, and again, you see the same sort of thing um, where you got A0 and A1, and then A2 and A3 and A4 and 5, A6 and 7. Um, but sometimes they um, overlap them where you'd have A0 and A1, and then here would be A1 and 2. And so depending on how you're using it, but this is not for analog, but for some of the digital pin, um, they might overlap them. Okay, so I'll just pick a uh, digital input here. So I'll say, let's say D5. I'll turn this around and plug it in. Oh, well, actually, I need to plug it in this way. I did write the correct the first time. And um, let's see, how can I keep this so you can see it? Um, maybe I'll use this to. All right, so here I am on the GoBot website. And if you click on platform and then scroll down, now you can go to driver and you can see there's some groove um, de devices are supported here on the GPIO, but you also have groove devices on the, the analog input. So that would be our sensor and stuff and the rotary one, like I mentioned, and then height squared C for the LCD. But we're not gonna start off there. We're gonna start with the LED. And if you click on this, this LED looks slightly different than the one that I have. Um, but this is a color LED module. I do not have the color LED one. As you can see, the one I have is you simply stick a LED of your choosing. But that's, that's not where I'm going to start. Instead, what I'll do is I'll start with the Raspberry Pi board as a platform. And then under that, here's the simple example. We've run this before. So I'll copy that. And then I'll go here and I'm in our, on my desktop. So I'm not logged into the Raspberry Pi, even though I have it powered up, as you see, it should be there waiting for me, but I'm not going to do this remotely in terms of remote development. Instead, what I'll do is if we look here, we have part five, which is where we left off. I'm going to do part six and you know what? I'll just copy from part five. I think we have like a module file or something like that. Um, on a CD CP5. I have a module file, go mod file there that I'll just copy to six. Okay, um, then I'll just um, CD to six 
and MKDIR CMD. Um, let's call it, you know what, MKDIR exam exercise one. Let's start with that. Exercise one, let's do LED. Groove LED. And what I'll do is do Visual Studio Code in this directory. And so for example, one, create a file, main.go, I'll paste the example in that I copied. And it says pin seven. Now, let's just run this as it is, see what blinks, and then we'll try and change it to the pin that I have it connected to, which is I think is pin five. So let's see if we can get this to run. Um, and so for that, we will follow the documentation as they have it here, which is to compile it locally. Now remember, Go can do cross compilation. So by saying Go architecture equals six, that's a Go ARM. So saying you want to use the ARM architecture and six instead of seven, and six is for the Raspberry Pi A, A plus, which is what I'm using. If you have a two and three, then you'd use seven. And then OS, Go architecture, ARM architecture. And this is sort of like which ARM. And then OS is Linux, because that's what we're running on our ARM board. And then Go build. Now, what these really do, if you don't know Linux, is basically set some environmental variables. But it doesn't export them. Um, so there are a couple of ways you can set environmental variables in Unix. Do export. export but And that keeps it around for subshell. But here, when you set it this way, you're just setting the variables specifically for this command. So if you check the environment afterward for these variables, they don't exist. Now, this is not a Linux slash Unix tutorial, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Just do this if you're on a Mac slash Linux. Uh, I don't know if this works on Windows. Um, but if you're on Windows, you can use the Linux subsystem in Windows and pretty much be able to do all this good stuff. Anyway, so go build, and then this says example, da da da, but I don't have anything in that example directory. Instead, I have my code in the, and then main. There we go. And then build it. I should use minus V so we can see what it's doing. But anyway, it's built successfully, and there's my main that go. Uh, if I don't want it to put the main here, I can just cd into my directory, and I can just do something like this. Do minus v main. Let go. Come on. Why is it trying to do math? I don't get this. All right. So now I have this, and if I run, oh, I can't run it because this is built for my Raspberry Pi, and I'm following this direction. So I should SCP it, this file, to my Raspberry Pi, and put it in the home directory. So let's copy this, and then we'll modify it. So we're following this to the T right now, and so my Raspberry Pi is I believe ta -da, SCP main and then pi at and I believe it was called raspberry yep and then slash home slash pi I think that's the direction and I copy it and let's see yep it's copying it, yep, successful. And then I need to run it, ssh minus t pi at, and we just set it out, it's raspberry pi. And then I need to do single space. So this is the command essentially. So this is saying do a ssh and run it on this host and this is the command. Usually if, if I don't put a command, it will just log in. But now I'm saying run this command. So if you put a command, at the end, you can do things like ls or execute the command remotely. And so I can run this. And there it is running. It says it started. And I don't see any LED blinking about once a second, which is what our code says should happen. So blink LED once a second on pin 7. Um, I do not have access to pin seven here on this board. 
Let me see, let's just double check. No, I do not have access to pin seven. So nothing blinking, that's fine. So at least the code is running. So let's do it again. This time we'll change it so that uh, it's pin five. Okay, and let's see if that works. So let's put that down there and hopefully we can see it. Um, let me stop this remotely. I'll change this to pin five. Hopefully that is the pin. And then we'll, we'll rebuild it. There we go. And then copy it. And then run it remotely. And it should be running. And it says it's using pin five. But again, I don't see anything here. So whatever pin five is on this Arduino, well, on this Raspberry Pi, it's not that. So let's do this. We have a command, which remember I said, oh, this can be used to run a command uh, remotely. So let's run the history command. And it doesn't want to work. No such event. Um, connection close. Um, I don't want to run my command. Okay, ls works. I don't know why the history command doesn't work. All right, so that doesn't want to work. Um, so I'll just log in. Okay, there was this command that uh, ssh pi. And if you remember, I'll log into the Raspberry Pi now. And so history, oh, it's, yeah, history command doesn't want to work here. Oh, it works. Um, if you remember, there's this command called rpi, I think, some, something like that. Raspberry Pi. Um, it was the pin. So looking at the pin out for the Raspberry Pi. Yeah, pin out. There we go. And here we go. And so if I scroll back a little bit, um, those are the pin above there, um, going from across the top to two red one, that's five volts. Then keep going across here. So this is across the top. So down here is across the top and here is the bottom. So I'm using pin five. So what is five? So it's GPIO seven, then pin 26. And then GPIO five would be pin 29. So in my code, what I really want to do is if I'm using GPIO nine, I want to connect to 29. So let's see, do they bring out 29 on this board? No, they do not bring out 29. I have 22, 24, and 26. And above here is five, 16, and 18. So I'll put it back to, since I don't have 29, I'll put it back to seven, and that is 26, which is here. So if I put this here, put it to 26, and I change my code, that should work. So let's see again. So change this back to seven, and let's do this. Um, I'll go here and rebuild. The pin seven now, copy it over. And I could run it remotely or run it from where I'm at. Um, so that, that main, that should work. And so it started and nothing. So that's pin seven. And I'm going with GPIO number. If we use in GPIO number seven, this should be pin 26. And pin 26, according to this groove shield, this is pin 26, D26. So I am not sure. One of those things that, again, just doesn't make sense. So the only thing I can do then is pull out my tester and check to see which pin here is actually blinking at a rate of about one every 
second or I could just connect an LED and see. So let me connect an LED and see and move it along and see. All right, so here I am. And as you can see, I figure out which pin um, is the um, is the pin that we're trying to control with pin seven. And so what I did was I used my little breadboard here and I have ground connected to the flat side of the LED, the cathode, and it goes through a resistor. It doesn't really matter what um, how many ohms that is, just use a few hundred ohms resistor. And then the anode comes up and that's what I've been using to strobe across and test each pin. This bottom pin, this is ground. So if we look at this pin out for the Raspberry Pi, that would be on that bottom row, pin 39. So that's where I have grown pegged. And because we know that though this is working now, it's blinking once, we can see that it's this fourth pin from on the bottom row, which is pin seven. So for Go, GPIO four is pin seven. So Go is using the Go bot is using the actual pin number, which means when we set this to five, we should be able to get GPIO three working. So if I control C here, go back here, and I do five, like we had before, and then go back here and then compile it, copy it over, and run it. What I should be able to see now is if I move this one over to the third pin at the bottom, it should be blinking, and it is. So that's fine. So which means if I want my groove shield to work, um, and I put pin 26, which is GPIO 7, well, uh, I have to actually put 26 in the code because there's a pin number. So let's stop this. Let's put 26 here. And let's rebuild it. Let's copy it over. And I'm going to run it. Now, the reason why I'm building it on my laptop is because I said a Wi-Fi is unstable. I've had issues with it. And I don't want to be sitting around waiting for, so I take that out. And I go back to my growth shield here. And I'm trying to use 26, which is this guy. So I should expect to see this blinking. <laughs> and that is not happening. So I can go back to this. Let's see, let's put this back here. So I said this is ground, and ground was this bottom pin 39 here. And 26 should be, uh, let's see, it's probably easy to come from the bottom. So 40, um, so here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight from the bottom. So let's do it. One, two, three, four. It's hard to see five six seven eight here and so that is working so that's pin 26 is working somehow the groove shield pin 26 though is not working that is so weird that okay let me do this let's assume that maybe what's really happening is that my groove shield is working I'll get rid of this for a second. My groove shield is working, but maybe my LED is in wrong or something. So let's see about that. Yeah, that would be totally surprised because I put the flat side here. Like I said, that's the cathode and that goes to negative. Here, in terms of controlling the GPIO, GoBot seems to be fine. It's, it's blinking it. 
Um, so why would it be able to do um, the um, control the signaling so that we can get um, you know the motor to turn? Um, and so that is very confusing. All right, this video is much longer than I planned it to be. So um, I'll cut it here. And the next time I'll come back and try and see if I can get some of these other ports to work, like the analog port with the rotary sensor and the touch sensor. And, and yeah, and then maybe see if I get the LCD to work also. All right, so I'll cut it here.